Thank you for taking time for Hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to the live broadcast all around the world on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and on AM, FM stations all across America. I can't wait to get out of Indiana. Nothing personal to the people of Indiana, but you suck. The state sucks. The pot here sucks. The laws here suck. There's only been a handful of people who I've been able to embrace, and really, you can all just say goodbye. I'm going to Potland, where there's a group of hardworking activists who have made great strides in their laws, who are busting their rear ends to make a difference, and the whole state seems to be on the same sheet of music. And what's more, the only time they have brown pot is when it's called ash, A-S-H. Before then, it's a beautiful green. Not that I want to sound bitter or anything. With that said, I want to also say hello to my joint host, Kerry Burns. Kerry, thank you for taking time for hemp. Hello, Casper, and what a treat it is to be on your last show in Indiana. Boy, I'll, that's history. Well, no, I've got a couple more to do next week. We're leaving. I'm leaving Wednesday, I think. Oh, so I'll okay. be doing a couple more here. Yeah. Well, this will be my last one in Indiana anyway. Okay. Yeah, it will be. It will be. And have you experienced the beauties of uh, the free plants in Portland? Well, I haven't experienced any free plants in Portland, but I've been listening to your descriptions, and it sounds really nice. Oh, man, I tell you, it's like getting out out of a black and white movie and stepping into Technicolor. It's just so different. I bet it is. I'm with you on that brown stuff. Yeah, and I, and I wasn't kidding. I think I made some kind of comment to somebody. For me to leave Indiana and to go to Portland, it's like going to the doctor's office and the doctor saying, for the last 19 years you've had diabetes, but today you're cured. And about the same time that happens, my cell phone rings and my lawyer tells me I've just inherited a chocolate factory. Wow, and I've won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't wait. And um, also want to say hello to KDK Distributors, an amazing group of people up in Canada who make it possible for us to do this show and be loud and proud. Uh, we appreciate all that you do up there, and it's an honor to be part of your family. On the program today, we are going to have Ryan Thompson. Uh, he's working hard as an activist to uh, make a difference in Utah, and they're putting together a radio um station of some sort that's going to be promoting the truth about how wonderful this plant is. And then we're also going to be joined on the half hour break uh, by Dean Becker from Drug Truth Net. And then we're all going to be talking about this wonderful plant and how it can make a difference. Now, I understand, Carrie, you've got a new website URL that you want to share with people. Yes, I do. We've got the uh, CannabisCorner.us now. You can access all the uh, videos directly to there. And, of course, it has the links to uh, Freedom Files and all that, too. But, uh, yeah, CannabisCorner.us. We're there. Well, that's awesome. And I would encourage people to check that out at TimeForHemp.com. If you like what you're doing, what we're doing here, you can easily make a donation by hitting the Donate button. And with that said, it's time to fire up a great big bowl and take a commercial break and come back and enjoy time for him. Yeah, I do. I do wake and bake and I do whatever it takes to get me through the day. First thing I do when I roll out of the rack is get myself a big old bowl of some good old-fashioned Ed Rosenthal Kush. And then after I do that, I get myself a big old cup of Joe. And then Jim goes to work. After that, I pet myself a cup of coffee. I get busy on my computer trying to make the world a better place here at Time for Him. On the program today, we got my joint host, Terry Burns, and we're being joined by Hippie Butter. Hi, Hippie Butter. How you doing, Brad? Good. How you doing? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Wow. <laughs> Did it Hi, just Brad. in the nick of time. How you doing? Okay. How you been? Been good. Good. Good to talk to you. Definitely. It's been a little while since I've been on Time for Him. How you doing, Casper? Getting ready for your move? Oh, I am. I can't tell you how excited I am to be going to Potland, Oregon. <laughs> We're all so jealous over here at Hippie Butter. Very, very jealous. Well, aren't you moving there soon? Going to try. We want to move out there to be able to start doing all the expos. Well, there's a lot of them out there. That's for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, there is. We're missing all the good ones, too. Out there, you've got people that understand what's going on. Yes. How about Obama? I mean, if we couldn't get the hemp industry going, I mean, he's talking about a new energy, new new plan. Boy, y'all are sitting right on top of one of the many products that you could sell and just flood the market. But no, we've got to worry about people getting high on marijuana. And I know if, I like to say they're making our our farmers poor and putting poor people in prison. It's really confusing. That's their intent. Well, that way they all make more money. Sure they do. Have you guys seen how they're now going to uh, have a reality show in some of the top hardcore prisons that are out there so they can even make more money from television oh. at being a privatized prison? Oh, boy. So. Well, I tell you, it's quite surprising the money that they're trying to parlay into, into people's paychecks by making this prison industry grow. Yeah, and they're growing it fast. You know, in 1850 in this country, we had 8,000 farms larger than 2,000 acres all growing hemp. I did the math on it. They were producing 100, I mean, excuse me, let's see, 16 million. They were producing 100 million pounds of hemp every growing season. Wow. And, Lord. It, and if they took the byproducts of all that, put oh. it into charcoal bricks, we could run all the all the oil refineries as is right now. You could take the oil just that you extract, not only from the seeds, but from the flower tops and stuff, thin that just like you do uh, making biodiesel, and you could run every motor on this planet. It's just insane that we put up with this ignorance in this country. Oh, please. It's amazing. But it's how... Uh, I and we see an awful lot of interesting things on the news, too, that also speak to that very same problem. That's true. Now we, we export 20, I mean, we import into this country every day 20 million barrels of oil. And it's something we could be growing on, on hemp farms around, you know, two to 300 million acres in this country, about half of what we sp uh, grow for food. We could spend on just growing the oil for the oil and that would that would bring a trillion dollars into our economy. Not give it to the Arabs a trillion, but bring it into our economy. And then if you look at the what that transpires into, you're looking at probably five or ten trillion dollars and and plenty of money to get these yokels in Washington satisfied for their spending free. Well, I'm also frustrated about the amount of uh, tax dollars that's spent on prosecuting people, and I'm also frustrated about the amount of dollars that our farmers are losing from not being able to take this plant and grow it for uh, the, one th the 50,000 different products that we're able to produce. I also thought it was interesting to see on the news how um, they are now catapulting 50-pound bags from the Mexican side of the border over the wall and to the American side of the border. Yeah. <laughs> and they, yeah. I they've saw got that. That's genius. <laughs> That's a great idea. I wonder if they're doing the uh, illegal immigrants that way, too. You know, put a little parachute on them and <laughs> zip them across, you know. Parachute? No, for the 50 feet that they're going to fly. <laughs> So to say they could just set up a pool on the other side and just they all get a good little swim right when they get across. It'd be fun. Yeah. Put a little Clorox in it. You've already you know disinfected them. You know exactly how fun. That way they get their money's worth. Now you now Brad, you know an awful lot about the different products that we could be making here in America. Uh, why don't you give some of our listeners an example of the uh, products that you have to import to make available on your website? Well, we have all our uh, products have to be imported uh, at the base uh, side of it just because hemp, as you know, isn't allowed to be grown in the United States. So all our hemp products are grown in Canada, and then they're put into seed form or oil form, uh, flour, protein powder, all different uh, ways. And then they're sent to different companies that process them in many types of hemp seed products, which are uh, very healthy for your skin. We have, there's uh, salves for hot and cold rubs, there's hemp seed foods, there's products for babies, there's products for pets, there are products for everyday use uh, that is all made from the hemp seed, which is all high in omega. And how, mu 
And just just as an estimate, about how much uh, uh, revenue would that generate if we were making all of that here in our own backyard? Millions and millions. Because, I mean, we have shampoo, conditioner, soap. So every product that they that people use every single day that they pull out of the ground is petroleum before they're made into different gly- glycerols and made into different soap products. We can all do with the hemp product, which our farmers can grow, which it's just a cycle from the ground up. The farmers put money back into the economy, which gives people more money to buy more hemp products. It's just a win-win situation. It is win-win. Here's a statistic for you. The in right at the time that they made the marijuana tax act, this country right after that started spending on average around fifty million. This is in the thirties, fifty million dollars a year to import synthetic flax and stuff like that to make clothing. Right now, today, we import about ninety percent of the flax that's used in this country for garment manufacturing and a whole host of other things. Every bit of that used to be made from hemp. Every bit of it. And I looked at the uh, the numbers on that alone. I mean, just the taxes that we're paying coming in on those shipments from other lands and stuff is is more than what we were spending for the for the materials back in the '30s. You can imagine what that would generate in revenue. Wow! Wow! I hear a ringing. Hello. Someone's phone is ringing. I do Welcome too. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. <laughs> it's Wireless been Freedom Radio. you called is not available at this time. Please try your call again later. Announcement one, switch two, 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 dash one. I love live radio. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. <laughs> the wireless customer you called is not available at this time. Please try your call you again later. Marijuana? Announcement one, switch two, 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 dash <laughs> one. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Well, okay. Groovy. Well, it's nice to know that the electronics of the world do work fine and that you know, some of the uh, people you know, involved with that do get high. Apparently. Darn, Eric, Hol- so. Eric Holder wasn't answering his phone. Casper, what's going on? I don't know. I've been trying to get through to him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so now how long has Hippie Butter been around, Brad? Oh, we started in 2005. So five years now. Wow. Good going. going. Yeah, and we're still trying to educate everybody of how wonderful of a product we have, and it's just been an uphill battle. But thanks to people like Casper, and we're able to talk to a wide audience and educate people about the best products in the world. They're all made out of hemp. You know, they used to make dynamite out of it, cellophane. I mean, just... you. Anything that you can make with oil, they can make with the hemp herds. And, yep, and uh, 70% of the plants, the herds. So you're talking about pay, the very high-quality papers by a less polluting process. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. But our country's too dumb. We're, we're just ate up with the ignorance. There's a lot of good people in this country like Casper and all the people in the movement and stuff that understand what this could do and all. But we've got this power pool in Washington that's just ate up with the dummy. All right, now, unless I'm mistaken, I think we have uh, uh, somebody on the line who is supposed to be on the show today, and uh, we've been... Is this Ryan Thompson? Ryan, are you there? I sure am. Thanks for giving me a call, and sorry for missing your call earlier. I uh, actually worked graveyard and slept in. Uh, I've been wiped out today, man, but thank you for giving me the time today and and for giving me a second chance here. And uh, hi, happy brother. How How are you guys today? Doing good. How you doing? I'm oh, very good. Very good. Glad to uh, glad to be on the air with you guys. Glad to be uh, celebrating freedom uh, and 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 uh, Casper's new move to uh, freedom. Uh, it looks like uh, Casper's going to be enjoying the same thing I get to enjoy out here and uh, able to grow some plants and uh, medicate himself properly. That's good to hear. You can do that in Iowa. That'll be uh, Oregon here pretty soon, won't it? I know, but where are you at? Oh, I, me! I'm in Washington, just up uh, north Are from Casper. Are you state? Yes, sir. Oh, I thought you were in a different state than that altogether. For some reason, maybe because of your activist work. I do activist work all over the country. We uh, travel to rallies and organize things uh, in three different states currently, and we're trying to get out to Pennsylvania as well. We've uh, we've got Vincent Alvarez. 
uh, set up with the uh, marijuana party in Pennsylvania and uh, helping him with the website. He unfortunately went to prison, so uh, we do Pennsylvania, we do Utah. Utah is probably what you were thinking of, and uh, Idaho as well, and uh, we're hoping to get into Arizona too. And then we're also working on uh, Sensible Washington's initiative here in in Washington, and uh, basically that's for full legalization. Uh, it, it, re- it just basically eliminates criminal penalties entirely for marijuana for adults. That's what it ought to be. Exactly, exactly. I heard you guys talking about all the many uses of cannabis, um, you know, and that's that's exactly what we're looking at here in Washington. Washington has gotten wise to this, that, you know, for so many years we've lost this crop, and now the people have an opportunity to get it back. So, you know, Sensible Washington is um, proposing that we just remove the criminal penalties. You know, there's no clauses for taxes. There's no clauses for restrictions, for limitations. It's basically just removing the penalties like it should be. Yes, and turn it over to the free market and put sales tax on it like you do any other product out there and don't have any other limitations. When they try to overregulate and try to put too much into it, then it, then it becomes very difficult for it to come over. If they would just legalize it, turn it over to a free enterprise, put a sales tax on it, the tax revenues would come in that they want. And you could do that with a price of cannabis way lower than what it is now. Exactly. Just the retail sales tax alone and, and, you know, the fact that people would be back to work instead of living off government assistance. I mean, there's so many jobs that can be had. It's amazing. People want to be have a point and purpose, and, and uh, it's like like uh, the products that Brat Hippie Butter sells and all. They, you could put those out, sales tax the heck out of them, and, and let that be the base of their revenues, not these, you know, oh, I'm going to have to spend $135 to go get a medical marijuana card, and then I've got to renew that. And, you know, they don't make people that go get six packs of beer do that. And that's, the, that's, what, we ought to, that's what we ought to put up to them. You're going to make us do that? Then the people who drink beer, they're going to have to go down. When they go to the liquor store, they're going to have to produce a card from a doctor if that cost them $135. I guarantee you that stuff would go out the window immediately. Exactly. Well, you know that. Absolutely. The thing that we're looking at here in Washington is uh, they're trying to regulate our medicine now. And this is what I've been warning the cannabis community, even the, the people that were against Prop 19 in California, is the longer we wait for legalization, the more the closer these guys are going to get to getting it to be purely medicine. And when they reschedule cannabis, it's not the people like you and me who are going to be in the business. It's not those people who are going to be enjoying the benefits. It's going to be the pharmaceutical people. You know, when they reschedule it to maybe a class two or a class three, you know, you're going to need a pharmacist license. You're going to need to, you know, be inspected by the DEA, and you're going to have to have all your transactions regulated that way. And, you know, the longer we wait for full legalization, the closer they're going to get their hands wrapped around the necks of this of this beautiful plant, and they're going to tax the hell out of it. They're going to require you to have, you know, pharmacy license. It's It's going to be ridiculous. And so I keep urging people, you know, don't worry about the medical anymore. Let's forget about the medical. The, the, the glory and, and the benefit to the people is going to come through full legalization to where we have this wonderful crop legal just like it used to be 72 years ago, and we get to use the benefits of it, not the pharmaceuticals, not the big companies. And the money's not going to be made on the smoking marijuana. I mean, let's face it, the, the real, I mean, you're talking about a, you know, a small little penny coin versus a big, large sack of gold by comparison when you look at the revenues that are going to come from the hemp industry and all the products. It, it's the the sales for the marijuana. I mean, you could they'll they'll almost be able to give that stuff away when you compare it to the revenue and tax dollars that's going to come from the uh, hemp industry. Yeah, hemp yeah. nuts alone could feed the world. Uh, exactly. No, I mean nobody Excuse has ever me? had. Or Excuse me. This is uh, FCC regulated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the squirrels have been salting their nuts, Casper. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't oh, okay. catch everybody. <laughs> who, who are we all speaking to today? I'm sorry. We got three people. I only thought we had Hippie Butter and Casper. And who else is there? <laughs> I'm Kerry Burns from uh, the uh, this is- Cannabis Corner. Oh, okay, great, great. Hey, good to see you. Good to talk to you. You too. I appreciate you guys all being here and, 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 and enjoying this, you know, and celebrating Casper's uh, new freedom. That's how I see it, you know, just to see one person get another step closer to freedom. Well, may I say that there's been a handful 
full of people who have been genuinely concerned about my being here in Indiana with this broadcast and uh, the stiff laws that they have pertaining to this plant. And it has been a concern that if uh, the law enforcement were to really be annoying in my world and continually arrest and arrest and arrest to harass me, they could have shut down time for hemp and silenced me. And then there are also people who feel that the show would grow and become a louder voice for the marijuana movement if I have the opportunity to be in Potland, Oregon, where I can meet a variety of activists and hardworking people who need to have a spotlight put on them. And I've not had a chance to meet them. And they also feel that I might have the benefit of encountering businesses that would be inclined to advertise on such a program and have the opportunity to meet me face to face. So we're hoping that everything that you all say is true. Now, I did make it a point to have you on the program today, Ryan, to not only meet uh, with Carrie and Hippie Butter, but after the break, we're going to be joined by Dean Becker, who also has a radio program. And I know that radio is one of the things that you're involved with, and it was intentional that today's lineup was established the way it is here at Time for Hemp. Thank you for taking time for hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to the live broadcast of Time for Hemp all around the world on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and on AM FM stations all across America. On the program today, I want to encourage you to go to NORML.org and make a difference in your neck of the woods by finding a chapter that's close to you. We are talking today with my joint host, Carrie Burns. Hi, Carrie. Hello, Casper. Hi, how are you? Pretty groovy. And then we've also got on the program today uh, one of my favorite sponsors and people who ha- has stood behind me for a long time, Brad Irvin. Whoa, from Hippie Butter. Say hi, Hippie Butter. Hi, Hippie Butter. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Oh, man, and then we are enjoying a joint conversation with our guest, Ryan Thompson. Hi, Ryan. (laughs) Hi. Very high. (laughs) Yes, we are. So, now, I understand you've got a couple of websites that are trying to make a difference, and you're trying to put together some kind of radio uh, format uh, station. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Hoping that this works out for the uh, the ASEAN network with uh, uh, Professor Ray Crystal, who you had on on the 25th, um, who's very excited to help his friend uh, Roger Christie, who has no bail in Hawaii. And uh, basically, we're just trying to raise awareness around hopefully what is the last marijuana trial, um, Roger Christie. And uh, we're also trying to expose people to freedom and get people active. You know, encourage people to speak out, and not be so afraid of their freedom. So uh, that's at sensilife.com, and then we also have uh, www.xcannabis.com, uh, and, and you know we kind of do ministry through X Cannabis. We we have a, a similar thing to uh, what Roger Christie started with the uh, THC ministry, and you know I've I've been into uh, faith in, in Jesus Christ for quite a long time, and I've always you know been invited to speak at different Baptist conventions and things like that. Uh, well, not always, but you know, in, in rare occasions, when when they can put up with me for long enough, they've they've had me speak about different issues there. So, I thought it'd be good to bring attention to you know the greatest crop God ever invented, uh, which is cannabis. Cool. That's really amazing. It's an awful lot of work, too, to say the least, and dedication. I know that uh, Ray has been a champion in time for him for quite some time. So I really appreciate his support. Yeah, he's he's great. He, you know, he invited me to uh, do some interviews, and and it turned into being inspired to make a radio show and and uh, you know get some people that you know aren't in the movement as much into the movement more. And the more people we can give a voice to, the more people who we can empower. I think uh, you know the more people that that we can get in the voting office and and inspire their friends and family too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there's a handful of other websites that you've been focused on that you wanted to give a shout out while you had an opportunity. Um, yeah, well, we do we do so many. I have around 30 websites. I'm kind of a, a computer programmer, uh, computer programmer by trade, and I do database administration at night. So, 
uh, you know, I figured my contribution to this movement could be via different websites. So we're actually making a hemp dome this year. Uh, we're going to start the foundation in California, in uh, Northern California, in the city of Alturas. Uh, we're going to make the world's first hemp dome uh, geodesic structure, uh, you know, that Buckmeister Fuller came up with back in the 40s. Uh, this geodesic shape combined with the hemp is going to be amazing. And, you know, it can be used as building material. It can be used as so many different types of material. So uh, we wanted to illustrate that through hempdome.com, uh, which, which is still kind of being worked on at this point. It hasn't uh, fully arisen. Um, and then we have slu, the number two, dot com, which is kind of a place where people could get free blogs uh, that want to express their message. They can go out there and sign up at slu2.com, get a free blog, and whatever you want to put on there. You know, if you wanted to start something like Wikilinks or, you know, uh, or Wikileaks, that is, if you wanted to do something that, you know, you typically, typically couldn't do on a different host, uh, we let you do that for free. And so we've, we've always been trying to promote this free speech aspect of, of the movement, you know, letting people get out there and do their own protests, you know, and, and have different dialogue and have some diversity in the movement. Now, are you using hempcrete on that building, the hemp dome? I am, yeah. We're actually trying to uh, fabricate the, uh, the struts and the, um, you know, the, the actual foundation out of hempcrete as well. Uh, we're we're going to try to get the, uh, the cross-sections made out of hemp as well with uh, polyurethane mix and hempcrete. Uh, you know, the basis of the hempcrete is the fibers that they send out. And uh, we're, we're working on a lot of different ideas, but we'd like to see it completely, as much as possible, anyway, built out of hemp. I'm, I'm looking at it. I've been wondering. Wow, that's amazing, because from what I've been reading about hempcrete, as time goes on, it actually petrifies and becomes harder than concrete that we're making nowadays. That's what I understand, and we've never built out of it before. You know, my father was a builder, and, um, you know, his father built uh, his own house, and, you know, I want to do the same thing with, with my own house when I finally get it built. Um, and, you know, as I understand it is the lye in the hempcrete actually petrifies it pretty well immediately. You know, after about eight hours, uh, when it's completely dry, you've got a breathable and stronger structure than what concrete could make anyhow, uh, but instead of it being totally sealed off and creating mold problems, hempcrete actually breathes and um, is not only, you know, an insulating uh, fiber, but it's also a, a very strong uh, load-bearing fiber, and uh, with the petrification, it, it's just an amazing uh, building material. Wow, now where okay, do you import... Just... Oops, sorry. I was just going to ask where he uh, imports let's... that from. Go ahead. What's that? Just going to okay. ask where you import that from. Do you get all that from Europe, the hempcrete? Yes, yeah, you do. Uh, mostly in uh, in uh, the Netherlands and uh, even England. In fact, England's growing tons of crops, uh, uh, tons of hemp, industrial hemp crops. And in fact, Lotus just really uh, recently made a hemp car that was grown in England. So uh, what, where we go to is hemptraders.com, and there's a lot of resources there for lumber and other hemp materials, and uh, if I could remember the the hempcrete producer, I can't at the moment. We actually haven't ordered our products yet. So, but most of uh, most of what we're going to be needing, including um, uh, plywood sheets of hemp, you know, particle sheets uh, of of building uh, lumber, is coming from the hemptraders.com. Wow. Okay. Now, I, for those who might have ever heard, we finally got Dean on Dean Becker to join us on the line, and we were in the middle of conversation. So, if um, my getting Dean on the line inter interrupted your conversation, forgive me. Dean Becker, thank you for being part of our broadcast. Hey, Casper, it's a, it's a, a privilege as always be speaking with you and your good friends. How's everybody? Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. Hello, hello. How you been? Good doing? morning. Uh, Dean, busy, you've been having uh, a conversation. We've been having a conversation with Ryan Thompson. I was wondering if you wanted to jump in with one of your questions. Well, look, to, to me, the, uh, the, the fabric of this drug war is unraveling. But there are other people who are trying their best to knit it back together as we speak. It's, it's time for us to uh, stand a little taller, speak a little louder, and demand that we deal with reality. And uh, this, these fables of old is, is just getting ridiculous. I, I found a flaw in the Singles Narcotics Treaty the other night that might be a way we can circumvent all this uh, prohibition. Uh, in Article 28 in the Singles Conference, which deals with the cannabis part, 
it says in there that the narcotics the treaty themselves are going to develop measures to go to regulate and and keep the manufacture of the cannabis leaf from happening they didn't say anything about flower tops nothing about stalks nothing about seeds nothing about herds they this specifically says the leaves of cannabis and i say y'all can have all the leaves you want just let us have the flower tops let us have the stalks let us have the herds i think this is one way that we can really really circumvent the law and also they they left it open where you could uh if you if if your country allowed such activity before this thing was signed, then you could reprise yourself from it and excuse yourself. And Timothy Leary's lawsuit in '66, which made the marijuana tax law unconstitutional, that means that it was unconstitutional all the way back to when it happened. And so that creates that period in 1960 when cannabis actually was legal, even though the Supreme Court hadn't ruled on it yet. Wow, I love it. Nice, nice work. So that I think that should be pursued, and also in the uh, Controlled Substance Act, the one they just put out, the new edition there in, in uh, February of this past year, they uh, they refer to it as cannabis sativa. They no mention of cannabis indica, no mention of cannabis ruderalis. And I say keep uh, keep the uh, sativa. We'll use that for making fuel, and we'll start smoking the indica varieties so solely. You know, uh, you're right about them knitting this back together. In my opinion, uh, these medical things that they're proposing here in Washington is in response to our legalization efforts, and they're reforming our medical laws where they're trying to shut out uh, enterprise. You know, there's 34 cannabis dispensaries, uh, gone to, you know, medical dispensaries here in uh, Spokane, Washington, and we have more here on this side of the state than they do in Seattle. Uh, at, at present, and so you know what they're doing is with the Senate Bill five zero seven three and eight uh, House Bill, uh, its companion bill, uh, House Bill eleven hundred, is they're trying to start putting limits on how many patients a provider can provide to, which they're giving twenty five well, is the number right now, and they're doing well, a lot of things like that. Oh, go ahead. I got to jump in. I got to jump in here and put a limit on how much more we can talk before we go to commercial break because Father Time is ticking the clock. So those of you out there who are listening, please go to our sponsor's website and let them know that you heard about them when you were packing a bowl and sharing spot with your friends and taking time for hemp. Yeah, coffee and reefer does make me feel all right. First thing I do when I get out of bed in the morning is pack a bowl, pour a cup, and get busy fighting this war on drugs. I would encourage you to go to norml.org. And I got to tell you, people out there at Normal, you really owe me a lot of money for all the free advertising I do for you on my program here at Time for Hemp, and I know I'll never see it because they use the expression, oh, we're a non-profit, and we're, we're supposed to be getting donations from you. So you're welcome, Keith Strop. I love you. Now, on the program today, my joint hosts, Carrie Burns and I, also have two great guests, Brad Irvin from Hippie Butter, and we've also got a hardworking activist who's now living in the state of Washington, Ryan Thompson. Thank you for taking Time for Hemp. Uh, we're, we're we're so honored. You have no idea the the, the inspiration you're giving uh, so many of my listeners today, Casey. Or, uh, sorry, uh, and and I'm so sorry that uh, that I was late today. But you know, you you're doing a great work. You've had me, uh, you know, just just inspired like you wouldn't believe. So thank you again, and thank you, Dean, and and um, and also uh, uh, Carrie uh, for for being with us today. This is just a great celebration of uh, you know. Of, of uh, you know the freedom that that you're about to experience here pretty soon, Casper. No, uh, I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I was so disappointed when I found out I wasn't leaving until the fourth or the third, because I can't wait to get to Oregon to enjoy all the benefits that's found there. You're Amazing. Twenty four plants is what they have there. Is that is that what you were saying on on the last show? Is that you get to grow twenty four plants there? Yeah, baby. I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you get to also have uh, 24 ounces in your house. 24 fabulous ounces! I mean, um, you can have... Is that about beautiful. a week's supply? <laughs> yeah, exactly. baby. I mean, uh, Just remember to get... stuff here in Indiana. But in there, it's fabulous stuff. I'm sorry, Brad, what? <laughs> I was just going to say, make sure you get all your... Uh, Credentials in order before you do anything. 
Hey, Amen. I've already done that. I'm already, the day I get off the boat, I walk into Paul's office, Paul Stanford. My doctor records are already there. I'm already a citizen of the, of the state. I've been there more than 24 hours. I've been there a week. So, Brad, the day I get there with my U-Haul before I even unpack me and the dogs, I'm getting my medical marijuana card. Then I'm getting my medical marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a pseudo form of freedom, Casper, but it, it really is empowering. You know, when we first moved here from Utah to Washington and I could have 24 ounces and I could have 15 plants, I thought that, you know, heaven had finally opened the, the gates and here I came walking through them. That's what it felt like to me. I bet. It's amazing. We, I spent time in jail so many times in Utah when I was growing up. I grew up in Utah in Mormon land. Uh, it's an absolute no-tolerance state. And the last time I served time for cannabis, uh, for cannabis was for when I had two grams in my pocket. Uh, most of it was ash from my pipe. And they took me to jail and uh, gave me eight months, basically. I, I, uh, I bailed out, skipped bail, came back from Washington to turn myself in. But, uh, you know, no, no sympathy whatsoever. Just for two grams of simple possession, I served eight months. And then uh, this last year, I went wow. down there to protest. I was holding a sign that said, legalize it at a parade. Everybody else is protesting as well. Uh, you know, their business, their political cause, whatever. And nobody else got a permit, apparently, but I needed one. Um, when I got arrested, they told me that my crime was using the streets without a permit. And so we, we challenged wow. that. I actually hired uh, Andrew McCullough, the, the director of the ACLU. I hired him as private counsel, uh, private counsel and we went after him uh, a little bit. You know, they, they didn't uh, put up too much of a fight. And um, a month after I was arrested, they changed the law that requires people to have a protesting permit to protest now. So, you know, we're making a little bit of progress. It's just, it's just these little tiny steps that we make that, you know, make the biggest difference. And combined, you know, millions Absolutely. of us can really make this happen. Now i got to jump in here because, Father, time does tick. We're down to about a minute, so let's let the guests give a shout-out. We'll start out with Ryan. Give us a shout-out to a website and a friend. Yeah, John Novak is in court today. He's also fighting for his medical marijuana. Uh, apparently his dad was a, a musician when he was a kid and uh, was quite popular, and I, I don't know much about him, but I know that John is putting up quite a fight. And, uh, and uh, our website, if you want to check out more information on John and lift other people up that are, are suffering in, in this persecution, you can go to www.xcannabis.com. That's the letter X and then cannabis.com. Right, Thank you so much, you guys. And before we give Dean a chance to give a shout out for his upcoming broadcast, let's get to Hippie Butter. Hippie Butter, shout out. Yeah, just remember if you want any good hemp products, go to hippiebutter.com. Thank you, Casper. And you're welcome. And my joint host today, Carrie Burns. Thank you, Casper. And have a great uh, time in Oregon. I know you're going to do well and you're going to enjoy it. But cannabiscorner.us, anybody that wants to watch some little old videos. All right, and Dean Becker, make it short, but give a promo. Yeah, uh, Casper, I appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, uh, have uh, this coming uh, Sunday, I've got Mr. Stephen D'Angelo, head of Harborside Health Center, going to be on the Cultural Baggage Show. Uh, and then the Century of Life show is going to feature Brendan Kiley, a Seattle uh, reporter talking about uh, the Levamisol that's in the cocaine coming north, the dog deworming agent. You can check it out at drugtruth.net. Uh, Sunday, 6.30 to 7.30 Central. Uh, please check it out. Please do your part to end the madness of drug war. Thanks, Casper. Absolutely, and I want to encourage people to go to timeforhemp.com if you like the work that we're doing and hit the donate button. Also, let people know the truth in your neck of the woods and share us with your friends. I'm going to have a fabulous weekend and get ready to move to Portland, or should I say Portland. And remember, the next time you hear me, you know that it's time for hemp.